Welkom bij een nieuwe aflevering van de Runspiration podcast. Vandaag spreek ik met Elizabeth Barnes. Zij is een superster in ultralopen. In 2015 en 2017 won ze de Marathon de Sabele. Een brute multistage ultraloop van 250 kilometer door de Sahara. Ook al aangeduid als de toughest foot race on earth. In 2015 won ze die editie zelfs door alle etappes te winnen. Nou, dat is bijzonder. Op haar Wikipedia staat een imposante lijst met races die ze heeft gewonnen naast de Marathon de Sable. En vele daarvan heeft ze een recordtijd neergezet. Maar, daar spreek ik haar niet alleen maar over. Recent heeft zij een switch gemaakt en is ze haar passie gaan volgen. En die ligt op seksuologie en relatiecoaching voor koppels. Um, op haar Instagram liet ze ineens een totaal andere kant van zichzelf zien. En dat heeft heel veel mensen de wenkbrauwen doen fronzen. Voor mij was dat de reden om contact met haar op te nemen. Want toen zag ik van, hé, hey, wacht even. Run your life. Iedereen heeft seks. Iedereen heeft, een, heeft een, een, op een of andere manier een relatie. En daar kan ik wel wat mee. Ik wil de overlap zien. Nou, daar hebben we het zeer zeker over gehad. In de podcast hebben we uitgebreid gesproken over het ultralopen. Maar we zijn snel overgeschakeld op haar uh, nieuwe onderwerp, seks en relaties. Nou, we hebben onder andere gesproken over de rol van schaamte in seks. Hoe je een goed gesprek voert met je partner over seks. Hoe je aangeeft wat je prettig vindt tijdens de seks. Zodat je uiteindelijk betere seks hebt. En... Hoe je je seksleven meer pit geeft als deze wat is ingedut. Nou, daar gaan we het hebben over vrouwvriendelijke porno, over dildo's, over um, 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 trio's en dat soort zaken. Nou, voor mij zaten er volop inzichten in en ik weet zeker dat het jou ook veel gaat opleveren. Mocht je een vraag hebben naar aanleiding van deze aflevering of vond je dit sowieso een waardevolle aflevering, geef dan een like, een comment. Of tag ons in je Instagram post. Dat helpt ons enorm om de verspreiding van deze podcast uh, te versnellen. Heel veel plezier. Welkom bij de Runspiration podcast. Mijn naam is Jeroen van der Nieuwelaar. En ik breng je inspirerende interviews over hardlopen en het bereiken van je doelen. Alright, Elizabeth, welcome in the Runspiration podcast. Um, nice to have you here. Uh, this will be the first uh, English podcast recording. So my English is still a little bit rusty, but um, uh, never mind that. Um, welcome. How can you? How will you introduce yourself to the public? Well, uh, well, hi, and it's uh, really great to be on the podcast. So thank you. Um, well, I guess most people know me from uh, ultra running. So I um, I started ultra running in um, 2011, and then yeah, a few years later I went on to win the marathon de Sable and a number of other races. And yeah, I kind of had a career in ultra running, I suppose, until not very long ago. Mm -hmm. um, before then, I worked as a management consultant. Um, primarily in in London, um, but also in Stockholm. So that's where I grew up and where I'm from. Mm -hmm. um, but I basically, um, yeah, I wanted to leave the corporate world and do something that I thought was more fulfilling and <laughs> interesting. So so that's what I did. And um, yeah, and now, you know, I've done running for uh, a long time. I'm, uh, I'm 43, the body, you know, is starting to feel it. And then, um, Um, I was training uh, for a number of races and then COVID hit us all. Yeah. <laughs> and I think uh, a lot of people's lives changed and, um, and so did mine as well. And I had already been thinking about what to do next. And it just, um, I suppose it just accelerated those plans a bit. So COVID became like the catalyst and I... And started to study 
um, sexology and couples therapy. So uh, what I'm doing now is I'm working as a running coach, uh, which I have done for, um, well, I don't know, like five years or something like that. So I coach people for Marathon de Sable and other races like that. And I also do uh, sex and relationship coaching. And um, of course, I do my uh, studies, which are in Copenhagen. And um, uh, I talk uh, a lot about sex and relationships on yeah. social media. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Well, that's an inter uh, that's an interesting combination. You. Uh you do and did. Uh, first of all, I want to, to go back to the ultra running uh, experiences you've had. Um, why did you start ultra running? Um, so the story is that, um, well, I started running um, in my teens as a way of kind of keeping fit. So I was running and then I sort of... Um, did my first marathon in 2002 and I um, did uh, marathons kind of regularly. Um, and I suppose when you are a marathon runner, there, there sort of comes a point where you go like, well, I can run faster, I can run further. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and sort of running further kind of appealed a bit more to me. But what really got me into it was that um, in 2010, in February, my father passed away and it was like, um, uh, completely unexpected mm -hmm. and he was 68 and I and I and my mom had Alzheimer's and, and she had already had it for a number of years um, and um, and that became like a wake-up call for me because I was like oh life is actually quite short you know and so um, I started a lot of soul searching and I asked myself well if I if I would die tomorrow would I be happy with how I had lived my life and the answer to that question was no so wow. I kind of thought I have to do something and this is when I decided to um to do something else with my life but it was kind of a process you know it's not like you all of a sudden you know you have like some epiphany and resign from your job like because you still have to pay the bills and you know know what to do and all of that so but anyway in this process because I was already running I I started to look for um, a bigger challenge, like something that would that would sort of feel meaningful. And then mm -hmm. um, I found I found this documentary about the Marathon de Sable. So there's this um, British uh, Olympic rower called James Cracknell, and he did it in like I think it was 2007 or something. I can't remember. But anyway, there was a documentary about it, and you mm -hmm. know it was very dramatic. Like he almost died and all that. But, um, <laughs> but anyway. <laughs> I, I I watched it and I was like, yeah, this is it, you know, like running 250 kilometers across the Sahara. Yeah, this is this is the thing. So really, I I found that and I I signed up myself and my ex-husband to it and um, well, my husband at the time, um, and um, uh, that was for the uh, yeah for the 2012 edition. And so in training for that. I I started to run ultras. So that's how it all started. So I started with my first 50 kilometer race. That was my first ultra and that was in May 2011. Mm -hmm. And then I sort of, uh, then once, you know, I think for, for some people it's like a huge step to run their first ultra, you know, you go like, oh my God, it's an ultra, you know, like it just sounds like a lot, but you know, an ultra is anything further than the marathon. So it doesn't have to be that long, you know? So in my case, it was 50 K, but then when I had done the 50 K, I was like, yeah, now I'm an ultra runner. I can do this. So then I signed up to a 50 mile race and I did that. And then I did a hundred kilometer race and then I did the marathon de Sable. And then after that, I was like, Oh, well, what do I do now? You know, because it's such a big thing. So then um, I first I was trying to get into to triathlons and doing Ironman, but oh, seriously, I just hate swimming. <laughs> <laughs> well. and cycling is so bloody dangerous. So I was like, nah, this is not for me. So then I decided that I would try something. So then I ran some hundred milers and I did uh, a longer race of 135 miles and, and then I came back to the multi-stage again because I prefer yeah. that the most. So, okay, why, yeah. why do you prefer the multi-stage more? 
Um, because it's like a mini expedition. You oh, know, right. it's um, it's a uh, it's like an adventure. I like the fact that you that you have a a camp that you uh, get to know people uh, over the week because often they are quite long. You know, like five, six, seven days. Yeah. Um, the places you get to go to, mm-hmm. um, and also the simplicity of life, particularly with the Marathon de Sable, you know, because you effectively carry your whole life in a backpack, you know, and it's surprising how little you can live on. And um, it's it's really nice. I think it's like a reality check because if you have, you know, problems at home, things you worry about, whatever, when all you do is eat, run and sleep and and focus on surviving, yeah. all of those things become unimportant. Yeah. And I think that's, um, it's very refreshing and it's like a relief and it's it's like a gra- kind of grounding. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think it's good for, for, you know, who you are as a person and your character to, to realize that really simple things are what matters. Yeah. So, what what is what is one of the most important lessons you learned about ultra running? Um, Maybe about yourself. Um, well, I don't know. I don't know. That's not, I don't think anyone's ever asked me that question. Now. Um, <laughs> well, it's. Um, I think you're you're stronger than you think, and it's. Um, your mind is is so important. You know that's something I've learned that that if you if you doubt yourself, then that's what's going to manifest. You know, but if you believe in yourself, if you if you go in with a mindset that you know you're 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 strong. Um, it's important to focus on what you can control and mm. not focus on what you can't control. You know, you can control your thoughts and your actions. You can control your preparations. That's it. You can't control anyone else. You can't control how fast someone else will run. You can't control the weather, you know. So don't worry about that. Just focus on the things you can focus on. Um, and that that that's something that i have learned because i've really really experienced it (laughs) um both sides like you know not doing that and then doing it and the difference um so that's that's probably the most the most important thing but also that um you know to be more more spiritual and more open-minded in that sense i think Mm. It's made me. It's made me a more spiritual person than I was. Oh, nice. Good to hear. Mm. So, <laughs> running running is not is not always about uh, um, achieving goals. Uh, no. But it's 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 for you. It's it's more a lifestyle, an adventure. Yeah, and the, the, my journey has been. I think it's been interesting, and I'm sure it's the same for a lot of people. But you know, I started running because. Um, I don't know. I was I was looking for something real, you know, to feel alive and I and to have experiences and I and uh, maybe to you know explore myself. I don't know, but I I never started running to to actually compete or win races. I've mm-hmm. I've won a lot of races, but when your focus kind of shifts from uh, running for that deeper meaning to running for winning or for sponsors or you know it yeah it's not the same thing anymore and i think i got a bit lost in that i i went through a rough patch where i was like why am i doing this you know because and 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 like a lot of people go like oh it's so great you know you have sponsorship and people want to have mm-hmm. sponsorships and they want to be influencers and they want to have free shoes and they want to get paid this and that and whatever. like don't i mean it's it's you know just just run because you enjoy it, you know. Who yeah. cares if you get some free shoes, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, well, well, like but, <laughs> we, yeah, 
But in the, in the in the beginning of the interview, you 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 ask yourself a very meaningful question: If I die right now, am I satisfied with my life? Wow, hmm. that's a deep one. At what 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 age were you when you asked yourself that question? Uh, I was um, thirty three. Thirty three. Wow. Yeah. Great. And if we, if we, um... it's such, and you know what? It's such a simple question. It know? is. It's such a simple question, and like, it's just that it just kind of like really makes you think, and it's so simple. I think it's quite, can be quite a scary, scary question. I've done sort of exercises like that, you know, in consulting, you do all of these sort of teamwork things and stuff like that, and I think there is one where you know, oh, what, you know, what, what someone reads what's on your like gravestone and you know stuff like that but yeah but but just this simple simple question you know because yeah. it's so real because you you can you can get run over by a bus tomorrow you know you don't know so, it is there's yeah. there's one deadline everybody has and yeah. easy uh, simple simple is most most of the time um uh, confused with uh being easy mm. question mm. simple everybody can ask themselves the question but the answer to answer it is very can be very hard it's not easy mm. to answer so yeah no okay no. nice and, and and if we if we fast forward to your recent uh, switch um um what when when did that feeling come that you you wanted to experience another side of yourself to explore more of the sexuality and, and couples uh, uh relationship territory therapy um well i mean it's sort of it's sort of evolved i suppose but i i mean look i've had um i've had many relationships in my life some uh, good some not so good mm -hmm. <laughs> i suppose most people love it like that but i um you know i met my current husband and um and I think uh, being with him sort of made me realize how incredibly good a relationship can be when, you know, especially when you're, you know, when you're really open and you can talk about everything. And, um, and I know that so many people don't have that. Um, you know, when I speak to friends, when I speak to other people and, and, um, and so I suppose I had this, and I had this kind of epiphany, like speaking to, um, another couple about uh, and observing and speaking to them about their relationship and their sex life. And I was like, I need to do something <laughs> like more <laughs> people, more people deserve to have, you know, um, fulfilling relationships and, and a good sex life and pleasure. And it's so, um, I don't know why, I mean, yeah, I don't know why it should be so, so difficult and complicated, but I think we make it very complicated I and mean, we make it complicated be because of um what society teaches us and um what we what kind of expectations that we put on ourselves because uh -huh. um because we think we have to be a certain way you know yeah what 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 are what are those expectations society because uh and in uh, I, I want to, i want to explore more about the uh, uh the side you're going right now and eh? the uh, relationship and sexuality so mm -hmm. let's 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 dive into that and, mm -hmm. and what is what is what is what is the most common um thing society wants of you as a uh, as a couple or in uh in in your yeah relationship wise What's the biggest part so, of the Yeah, so I mean, I suppose it varies to some degree, like, you know, um, where you where you grow up, but, you know, there are um, societal and cultural norms for how we should be. There are religious norms. Um, and so, and, and, and different families put different expectations on their children. But let's mm -hmm. say, you know, like not, uncommon you know it's okay 
um, it's important to get the good education, to get the right job, um, to marry the right person, which fits into, you know, your family's kind of standards mm -hmm. <laughs> and, um, and, you know, and be, get married and be monogamous and, you know, have to smart children and, yeah, yeah, <laughs> and you yeah. know be successful in your career and um and so it's like this path that is sort of there that you're you're supposed to take mm -hmm. um and also what's interesting about relationships i think is that um you know uh in our culture most people marry for love we don't you know there we don't typically have arranged marriages you know like so we marry oh. for love um but um marriage you know didn't used to be like that and i'm not saying that arranged marriages are are necessarily good but but um um but but at a very sort of high level as i say this um marriages used to be more of an arrangement you know oh. um and it was therefore was kind of accepted to find love outside of the marriage. Mm. But now we marry for love um, and infidelity is like associated with huge shame. Um, we expect um, our partner to be everything for us, you know, um, you know, our best friend, you know, the um, mom or dad of the children, you know, um, someone that we can talk to about everything you know the most fantastic lover and you know and 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 it's a lot of burden to put on one person to be like be. everything of for course. you yeah. and i think that that becomes a problem in many relationships so um, that's that's why we well we put so much pressure on it because it has to be the right one and it has to be fabulous because um yeah we 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 raised the bar yeah yeah i think so i think so um and um yeah i think a lot of, of people put a lot of pressure on themselves and and uh and on their partner and um and i mean uh yeah, divorce is it's more accepted but it's still you know it's failure yeah know? in that sense in as a failure yes yeah yeah, yeah. Um, what what um what do what do uh if, if we come across sex uh, what what is what are most common problems people uh in relationships when it comes to sex so some common problems um I mean, it's very very common to have um Dif differing libido so like one person mm -hmm. wants wants to have more sex than the other one like that's i think super common and it can be like you know it can be quite minor right like one person wants to have sex every day and the other one twice a week okay like it's not a major issue but it could be like you know it's not uncommon that people live in a completely sexless relationship you know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because um because for whatever reason it stopped working and and um and one person doesn't want it anymore you know and i think that's a super common problem and yep. and um eh, or i know it is but it's very shameful so i also don't think a lot of people seek help for it um unfortunately if we, if you, if we can stick to that problem what is is that is that a is it a problem or is it is it solvable in some way well so look it's only a problem if it's a problem i mean so uh yeah. so 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 i mean there, there's uh, not having sex is perfectly fine it's not a problem to not have sex not everybody wants to have sex um and that's absolutely fine the problem uh, only occurs if you're in a relationship and one person wants to have it and the other person doesn't want to have it mm -hmm. then it is a problem um but there can be many reasons um you know why it is like that and so there's no like you know quick fix or you know it's not like a pill you can take and then it's solved you know yeah well so... but they they are solved. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's well the quick quick fix never wins but, but okay in, in if you if you find yourself in such a situation and mm -hmm. 
Um, I, I, th I think uh, everybody can uh, relate to that. Um, such a situation, what to do? So, I mean, I would say it, the, the, the first thing to do is to try and, and, um, and have a conversation about it with your partner. But in reality, that can be very difficult because if you have reached that point, chances are you can't actually talk about it. Um, you find it very, very difficult or, um, you know, maybe you're not uh, in a place where you talk to each other very much anyway. I mean, mm -hmm. so it depends, right? But if you can talk about it, um, then that's, of course, the best thing to try and just, you know, um, express what you feel without, um, without judging or blaming or shaming, yeah. you know, just... Um, Try to be objective and open and just stating how you how you feel and listen to the other person um see if there's something you can do about it and then um and then uh, if if there isn't anything that you come up with you know yourselves then go and see a therapist um, okay. to get to get help to and to see if there is a you know a solution or a way a way forward Mm -hmm. So what you what you say basically is first of all start a good conversation, but that can be quite hard if you're not used to speak about talk about sex in your relationship. Yeah. Um, what tips do you have for couples uh, in uh, starting such a conversation? So yeah, I mean it's uh, it's so interesting this I think because a lot of people never talk about sex, but you know. But we have it, but we don't talk about it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and it's it's fascinating. Um, but so, well, first of all, I suppose, are there, I mean, are there other things you can talk about? So do you, do you talk at all? I mean, do you have, um, it can be good to identify situations where it's, it's uh, easier to talk. So let's say, okay, you know, maybe you have dinner together and after dinner you sit and chill in the sofa. Is that a good time for you to talk about something? Or maybe, you know, when you go to bed at night, is that a good time to talk about something? Or perhaps take a walk. For some people, it's much easier to talk when, you, when you're out walking or something because you don't have to look the other person in the eye and it can mm -hmm. be easier to talk. Um, it can be the same if you lie in bed because you know you can look you can look up in the ceiling if you want you know <laughs> you know yeah. like it's just that it's so first first of all first of all you have to find the the right <laughs> or create the right circumstances so it wouldn't be a, wouldn't be a good moment if 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 it occurs and somebody wants to have sex one of the couple one of the uh, and the other one doesn't uh, that's not the right moment right no I think it's better to have this conversation like. Um, uh, disconnected from the the sexual situation yeah um but but there are two different they're like two different conversations you know because it's important to be able to talk about sex i think when you're not having it mm -hmm. um but it's also important to be able to talk about sex when you actually are having it because um nobody is a mind reader so if you can't express what you like and what you want, you can't expect someone else to know that. And I think um, there is a lot of uh, pressure on men to, for example, if we talk about a, like a it's like a heterosexual relationship, I think mm -hmm. there's a lot of pressure on men to to like deliver satisfaction to the woman, you know, to know how to do everything, and no. you know, but but every individual is different, and so. Um, so uh, how can you expect someone to just know everything about you, you know? Um, and so I think it's very important um, for women, because I think, I mean, I'm not meaning to be like stereotypical, but it's, you know, I'm generalizing a bit because I think this is very common. Yeah. Um, I think it's very common for women to not dare to say what they like, you know? Um, and I think if you want to have good sex with someone else, the first thing you need to do is know yourself, you know, know how you function, you know, know what turns you on, know how you get an orgasm, you know, not that that's necessarily the end goal all the time, but you know, like know your body. And when you know your body, then tell someone else what you like or show them, you know, um, because otherwise, 
everybody's going to guess and be quiet and then like mm-hmm. you know you're down to luck if it works or not yeah 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> it is yeah, then, then you're lucky if you if you hit the jackpot and it can mm. be hard to, it can be hard so, to do that so, you know, so what, it can feel what, a bit awkward but yeah i i can imagine that that uh, can be the case so what what do you um how do you what what tips do you have for uh for uh partners to discuss uh, during sex how do you how do you do that yeah okay so um so i mean it depends what you what you what you do but but um you can say like you know i would you know would you if there's something on you you can say would you like would you like to try this like hey would you like to try this position or this toy or you know blah blah and then you know whatever you're doing it's like using quite simple ways of communicating you can say yeah if something feels good like reaffirm that that feels good because that's positive right so that's Mm -hmm. encouraging for the other Mm -hmm. person i think it's better to try and be positive than to point out everything that's not working you know but Uh, like reinforce what's good so when something is good don't just be quiet just say that it's good you know um so yeah so more of that please or that feels yeah that feels really good or i get so horny when you do that or whatever you know whatever whatever um grunt is fine as well yeah it's fine as well and maybe you have to practice you know because sometimes those words they just don't come out maybe it feels a bit strange so you know you can practice them i mean you can practice them on your own like practice in the shower or whatever just talk to yourself and then um uh and then and then simple things like just being able to say you know a little bit more to the left more to the right up more up more down slower Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah that rhythm is good um yeah keep doing it that way um you know uh, things like that just just try and explain how you want things done it's really not that difficult you just have to open your mouth and say it Um, yeah yeah, basically that's that's that that's the point but um first of all you have to overcome well fear yeah yeah fear shame i mean it's uh it an embarrassment um but i think um uh, you can start just little by little and it's going to get more and more comfortable but of course what's really important is that you also that you also listen to what your partner likes and wants right so um so there's a i think with sex there's always a, a give and take and a, and you have to be open and 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 listen you know and and i think um sometimes particularly men can have a big ego and they go like now it should be done my way and you know why is my way not good Mm. um uh, and you know you just have to drop the ego in the bedroom you know just have to listen (laughs) because because every person is different so just because something worked with one person doesn't mean it's going to work with someone else um but that's what makes it so interesting as well you know because because it's an opportunity to learn you know to learn more more skills you know and yeah yeah Yeah, i think it's about the intention you have with it so if the intention is right from both sides you'll come up with a plan or uh, the situation uh and you create the situation you both uh would like to be the situation right yeah yeah exactly and then i think when it comes to you know when it comes to talking about um sex like outside of the bedroom um things that can really help um is to, to just get something started is if you if you listen to a podcast or you read an article or you know maybe you you watch um some kind of film and you know you can say look i i listened to this really interesting podcast the other day would you mind you know would you want to listen to it and maybe we can talk about it you know uh-huh, uh-huh. it can be like um a way of bringing that topic up um that um can really can can kind of help kick starting that conversation and then initially it's like you know you you might be talking about the podcast or about the article and so it can be easier um to do it that way i think yeah. um to to get started 
I'm 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 happy I'm happy to uh, uh, um, to provide this podcast for couples to <laughs> uh, start the conversation with. So, if you're listening right now and uh, this podcast is the <laughs> is helping you with it, please uh, let us know because um, that would help us hugely, both of us. So um, please uh, give us a tag on Instagram. So uh, we'll 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 know that uh, you hear what we have to say. And um, yeah, maybe we, we can we can help you with that. Nice, good. Um, if you find yourself in a long-lasting relationship, there inevitably comes a point where um, you think, uh, well, where where sex becomes a bit natural or mm. uh, uh, might be boring. And you would like to spice things up in the bedroom. Mm. What do you suggest to do at that point? Yeah, I mean, so the first thing is, um, yeah, I'm going to make the assumption that that there kind of is some sort of sex life <laughs> and that both parties would like to spice it up. So that's, I mean, that's a kind of a, um, a good starting point, I suppose. Um, well, and then it's like, you know, exploring exploring options and um so again like i think i'm asking this for a friend huh? yeah yeah <laughs> okay but i'm gonna give you some uh, some specific example i'm gonna give you some specific examples okay. um of what what people do um that might uh, that might work so um you can uh, you can watch porn together if you haven't done that before Mm -hmm. um and um yeah, and it may well be that like one person likes it the other one doesn't and i mean porn is a very controversial topic um but i think that there is good porn and there is less good porn so um by good porn i mean like more kind of ethical porn that is um taking into account you know more realistic situations focusing yeah. in on um female pleasure mm -hmm. um and so there are, uh, you know, there are uh, plenty of good options for that. So that what can do you be suggest to start with? Um, well, in terms of what in, in to terms watch, of sure. the female female friendly uh, porn or uh, realistic uh, 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 sex in porn. Um, also, there is. Uh, can I mention a site or? Yeah, of course. Yeah. So there is. A, there is. Um, um, a Swedish, uh, she's Swedish actually, <laughs> a producer called uh, Erika Lust, mm -hmm. and um, she, I think she has a really good um, site. So she has um, um, two two different um, sites, but it's um, yeah. There's a lot of different options depending on what you what your preference is, but I think that's a good place to start for sort of um, yeah, female friendly, you know, porn. Um, mm -hmm. And by pre female friendly, I don't mean there's no action. I just mean that it's more realistic and more ethical. And um, yeah, so uh, that's that's one thing. Um, then um, uh, second thing is, I mean, um, just I think um, it's always nice to make yourself feel, you know, a bit special. So uh, maybe some new underwear um mm -hmm. you know um, putting some effort into yourself you know and your own self-care to make you feel good and sexy and that goes for men too you know sometimes men just get a bit sloppy and they think that it's just the, the woman that should take care of herself i mean that's mm -hmm. really not uh, not the case i think so so men can do the same mm -hmm. um so there's uh, two things um yeah. then um what you can do as well, uh, which is what a, a lot of people like fantasize, for example, about maybe having a threesome, inviting someone into the relationship. Yeah. Um, so if you, it doesn't have to stop at a fantasy, you can do that. Mm -hmm. um, or you can open up your relationship. Um, so if you have a, if you have a relationship where you are very secure with each other mm -hmm. and you have good communication, um, it, I think that's, um, you you can you can never solve like a bad relationship by opening it up. You know you have to have a solid relationship to do that. But if you have that, um, opening it up to you know um, 
inviting other people into your sex life to spice it up. Mm -hmm. um, that can be um, a really good thing um, if it's right for you. So it requires, it just requires a lot of communication. It requires knowing what your um, kind of rules are um, and that both people are comfortable with it. Yeah. Um, but that think, can be something. I think the last one is the most important, being comfortable with it and, and just know that uh, you can... Um, yeah, how do you say that? Um, to, 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 have, to, to know the difference between lust and love. Yes. Yes. Um, I, think, I think from a lust point of view, uh, that would be a good thing. Well, uh, if we don't talk about good and bad, but if 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 uh, partners think that uh, 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 the relationship uh, wouldn't last because uh, of uh, inviting another one, a third party into the the bedroom, um, then I think I think uh, that's not a good idea to start uh, a threesome. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. So, I mean, there is a, you know, some people live in um, polyamorous relationships where, you know, you effectively have um, like more than one, you know, partner and there is um, love involved between, mm -hmm. you know, people in that constellation, however many people there are, um, which can become rather complex that's definitely not for everybody no. um but it's much easier to say okay you know you are a couple okay you know that you love each other you know what you have um and you can still have sex with other people and you can leave it at that you know um and so um so there's no love involved mm. um, but it's like um, you know, you can look at those other people as, you know, <laughs> uh, just, a, uh, it's, it's like, uh, some, some, someone who is like a bit of a catalyst for your sex life, you know, yeah. um, because what happens with that is, you know, you, um, well, I mean, the, of course the, the, what you can do with more people than two, you know, can make it more fun. Um, but also, you know, if you've been with the same person for a long time, mm -hmm. you can learn new things, you know, and you can get new ideas. Um, and so, um, if you're, if you're prepared to open up your sex life, um, I think that is maybe the most powerful way of, of spicing it up, but it's not for everybody because not everybody wants to do that, um, no, no, of which course. is, which is fine. Um, but then the other thing is, I mean, sex toys are really on the rise now, super popular. I'm a mm -hmm. big fan of sex toys. Everyone who follows Bring me in the toys. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that's another way of spicing things up. And, um, and you know, um, um, I, uh, and I, th and, you know, maybe a lot of people think that, oh, but sex toys is like, okay, it's, uh, for masturbation. Well, I think they are perfect for couple play. I think they're great for couple play. I mostly use mine for couple play, you know, and we think that's fun. So, um, uh, and then um, as long as, um, yeah, as, as long as um, you, as long as you don't feel threatened by it, I think that's important, you know, and there is no threat in sex toys, you know, they are not replacing anybody, you know. No. Um, you know, so uh, that's important to just have that mindset, you know, just a dildo is not replacing a penis, you know, it's just something else. <laughs> uh, how, do, how, do you, how do you come up with the right sex toy? Because there's a lot. Yeah, it's a little bit, um, it's a little bit, um, uh, trial and error i think because uh, because everybody is it is different but perhaps you have an idea of what kind of thing you would like to begin with you know there are um different kinds of vibrators they're actually like couples toys um that that you can that you can use and uh, there are there are toys that you can remote control so that can be sort of a bit fun mm -hmm. um if you want to add some fun into your relationship um and then it depends. I mean, maybe, you know, if you want to have a pure like clitoris stimulation or if you want to, 
play with a dildo or if you want something for anal play, like for example, a butt, butt plug can be super fun for both because it can really like make it feel like more intense and um, for example. And so, um, yeah, it's, it, I think it's a matter of, of just be, being open-minded and trying things. And now there are, there are like lots of reviews of all sorts of toys mm -hmm. everywhere. I mean, um, just go in, go on YouTube and just put something in. I mean, but um, also going to, going to a, a shop together as a mm -hmm. couple, like a sex shop, mm -hmm. um, and looking at things together. And often um, the staff is very good and they know about the toys and they know what they're doing. So also, you know, um, just having the courage to talk to the staff and, you know, ask questions. Um, and then maybe you, and you can, then you can see them in real life. You can feel, um, feel them, you know, yeah. if they are vibrating or whatever, you can turn them on. You can, you can see, you know, if you think you like them. And, yeah. Great suggestion. Yeah. Mm. yeah good. So, oh, and wow. then, uh, and then I think just try and make an effort to make things a bit, you know, exciting and romantic and, um, you know, uh, I don't know, incense, candles, you know, have a, have a date night, you know, dress yeah. up. Remember um, maybe, how, it, how it used to be. Yeah, how it used to be. Book a ho maybe book a hotel night, you know, just um, even if it's just around the corner, you know, and, uh, and have a date night. And, mm -hmm. um, and um, yeah, things like that. And just um, try and pay attention to each other, give each other compliments. Um, so, you know, it's about feeling, also about, you know, it's not just, you know, I don't know, like going from nothing to sex, you know, you have to get the feeling, you know, like you want to feel appreciated, you want to feel sexy, you know, mm -hmm. you want to feel attractive and so creating that for each other. Yeah, create the special well, atmosphere. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Nice. Good. Good stuff, Elizabeth. Thanks for that. <laughs> Um, Elizabeth, if people want to know more about you and your professional life, um, where, did, where can they find the information? Yeah, so um, I have two websites. So elizabethbarnes.com is my main website for everything to do with sex and relationships. Um, and I have articles on there, videos. There's um, some pages about me so you can you can read more about me mm -hmm. um book a consultation if you want to and then i have a page for running which is ultra.coach mm -hmm. and um there's um yeah all my running coaching and also um all of my blogs about running okay. so um so that's where to go and then it's the same on instagram so elizabeth barnes is now mostly sex and relationship talk and uh, ultra.coach is for the running yeah okay and the facebook i don't do much on facebook actually so i'm sort of there but yeah i, I don't know i'm not okay. very active <laughs> so if we want to join you on face following you on on the socials then instagram is the go-to place and yeah, for the rest instagram you have the both best. websites you mentioned and i'll put them in the show notes as well so people can uh, can search uh, for them nice mm. okay elizabeth did we did I ask, did, uh, what's the question? Is there a question I didn't ask, but should have done? No, I think it's good. I mean, uh, we talked about uh, a few things before we started, but I think it's like when you start to talk about these things, you just talk so much, don't you? So it's <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think what we yeah. should do is like, if people have, if people thought this was fun and they have questions, um, send in the questions to you and yeah. then, and then maybe if there are enough questions that people want to hear about, we can do another podcast. Yeah, we can, or time. an Instagram live or whatever. Yeah, uh, yeah, something like that. Yeah. Now it's, it's, it's so easy to, uh, to set these things up. So it's, not, it's yeah. not, a, not a big deal. So send in exactly. the questions if you have them and uh, we'll come back to that later. Elizabeth, yeah. I, would like to, I want to like to thank you a lot for this interview. And... Um, I'll speak to you uh, soon in the future. Yeah, I hope so. Thank you so much. Good luck. Goodbye.